Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a pendant to match with the earrings that we created in last week's video. So I just thought I'd show you those earrings again and so if you haven't watched that video already please do go watch it because we are going to be using the same mod cane that we used in that video today. We created earrings and a cute little ring. And so what you're going to need to start is a piece of Primo Pearl White Polymer Clay. And I'm just choosing the best side. I think this side's best. And then you're also going to need the same stamp that you chose to use uh, in last week's video. And so I'm going to be using my Cracked Earth stamp. And so I'm just going to place my clay in there. Let me just zoom you out quickly. There you go. And now I have to be a little careful because I'm not going to be putting cornstarch on the back because I want it to remain uh, sticky on the back. So you just need to be careful when you first start. And if you're using a roller you can spray some water to prevent sticking. But I don't want to put cornstarch on because then that makes the back uh, non-stick. And that makes um, a few of the next steps a little bit harder because uh, I want to be putting a layer on top of this so that needs to sit correctly. We're going to be doing a mic shift so it's definitely easier if you have a sticky back to stick to your work surface rather than, well, a non-stick back. So I'm not putting cornstarch on it. Okay, and there we are. Just press that in and if you're not sure if you've got a good impression you can always swap it around to the other side because these stamps are translucent you should be able to see if you, the uh, imprint is imprinted properly and they should come off very easily Okay, and just use normal clay you don't need super soft clay for these stamps they'll work just fine so long as your clay is not crumbly they'll be fine and now I'm just going to trim away our excess clay and just put that back in your pearl white packet. And you can use any stamp for this, just make sure that it does match with your earrings because we're busy making this pendant to match with those earrings and the ring. And just grab your um, a flexible tissue blade and just do your mica shift and you should come out with a really nice mica shift and I'll just shave off all of the raised areas there we go now I'm just going to grab a piece of grease proof paper and I'm just going to use that to burnish this flat and so th today I'm going to be focusing on telling you guys how to um, avoid seam lines and so if you've been wondering how to do that carry on watching the video because I'll be doing a lot of um, I'll be joining canes and I'll be joining veneers and we'll need to get rid of those seams so I'll show you how to do those that successfully in this video. And there we are, that should be completely flat. Okay, so now we are ready to place mod canes on here. Now I don't want to use up too much of the clay and so I'm going to be bringing over my cutter that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to be using this nice square cutter. And I just want to trim around it because I don't want to use up too much extra clay. So. I'm just leaving a little bit of a border around it so that it gives me some extra clay to work with but I am trimming away enough that I'm not using up a whole bunch of clay. Now you will take your mod cane and I have a few different pieces I've just cut it into lengths so that we have some different pieces because each length will look a little bit different and so I've taken those and I'm going to just cut those with my thin tissue blade 
I'm going to try and get nice clean slices and then I'm going to scatter them across the pearl white. There we are. Then you'll take your greaseproof paper again now that you've laid your cane slices over your pearl white and you can use plain printing paper as well and then just gently go with your finger and just start rubbing over the top and this will work with any cane slices so if you've been wanting to join cane slices onto a backing this is a great way to do it and if the cane is nice and soft you should be able to do this and have no seams at the end of it just go and make sure that you give this a really good rub and if you don't want to use your fingers you can use your roller just make sure that you're not rolling backwards and forwards you want to be pushing your roller backwards and forwards okay it shouldn't take too long at all there we are give it a feel over the top see if you can feel anything and I've got a few over there that just need a little bit more rubbing and you should be able to feel your hand if there's a seam there we are so that is our first veneer done and so I'm just gonna pop this off to the side and our next veneer we're just going to grab a piece of pearl white and I've run this out on my middle setting so the piece of clay that I used for the mic shift in this one was about um, about two millimeters thick then I did the mica shift which has pressed it down and made it thinner and then I shaved it and then I also pressed the mod canes into it so this is about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half and so I'm going to start with this pearl white at about a millimeter thick and then once we've done what I need to do it will be about a millimeter and a half thick because I want the sheets to be around the same uh, thickness so again can I just place my cutter there give myself a bit of a rim to work around But again, I don't want to waste any clay unnecessarily. There we go. And then I'm going to take my mod canes again. And I'm just going to take a few slices. And it's okay if you make these a little bit thicker. Let me just do it over here. Let me move this out of the way so I can show you what I'm doing. Now I'm just going to take a few slices of each one. There we are. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my first one. Go start at the top there. And I'm just going to place them next to each other. I'm not going to be overlapping, I'm just placing them next to each other. And I'm trying to keep them in the order that I cut them so that, that white is slowly going from a fairly large piece to a small piece in the mod cane. Okay, and then I'm going to get another cane which has a completely different pattern inside it, and I'm going to cut a few slices of that one. And I'm going to try and put that on in order too. And I'll carry on doing that down the square so that I have a line of one type of mod cane. And then I'll just attach the next one. And it's okay if you have those little holes there. That's fine. And I'll just carry on until I have filled my square with these. Okay, and here is how it will look. Now again, taking our greaseproof piece of paper and just burnishing. Really easy. And now that pearl white is definitely going to poke through and that is fine. 
like that so that it still looks like they're all individual cane pieces and they don't merge into one thing. Okay, and I think that will be flat. Almost there. And the reason it's important to get rid of seams is because if you are doing sanding, you want something to be completely flat when you start. First off, because it makes sanding a lot easier. And secondly, because if you don't do sanding, if you don't sand it vigorously, it means that you'll still have that seam when you are finished sanding. And so um, that will actually appear after you start buffing and things like that. And so it won't appear as one smooth surface. You'll be able to see those seams. So it is important to remove them. Now we're going to be putting resin on our project today, so I don't have to worry too much about the seams, but it's still a good idea to get rid of them if you can. Okay, and there we go, that's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to trim these ends. So it's nice and neat. Okay, and so we are now ready to join these two together. But before, well, we'll do that now. But after we do that, we need to start uh, making a cool little wire inclusion. So I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. What I want to do is I want to run this through my pasta machine just to make sure that it is the right thickness. Now I'll do the same for this one. There we go. And that will just make sure that it's nice and even in thickness. And then trim both sides so that they're nice and flush with each other. And then I'm just going to place them down like that. And I don't want to join them just yet because we want to do our wire element first. So I'll just pop these off the side and they're ready to join. And you're going to need some 16 gauge silver wire. And I'm using zebra wire. And so I'm just going to unloop a bit. And I just want to trim away this because we don't need that. And what I want to do is I want to start by making a spiral. And I'm working on my uh, coil so that I don't waste any wire. Okay, and then you'll start the spiral. And then just use some flat nose pliers. And these are bent nose pliers actually, but you can use flat nose just to coil your spiral. Now I just want to see this for reference to see how big it needs to be. And a little bit bigger. Okay. Then it can be a little bit fiddly to work off of the um, coil. And I'm just going to bend, whoops, to grab all of that a bit better. There we go. I'm just going to make a bend in the wire and curl this up to it so it's nice and sitting like that. And I should be able to use that amount of wire now. So I'm just going to cut it off of my spiral. And I'm just going to say that I'm happy with that, yes. Okay. And then I'm going to place my round nose pliers at the base and just hold it firmly and then pull your wire. Then place your pliers where you would like it again. And actually no, that's not what I want to do. Let me just bring that back up again. I want to place my pliers 
here and bend. So you're just going to form a few squiggles. And they're completely up to you how you want them to look. And I'm going for completely random. Okay, and what I just want to keep an eye on is it needs to reach the top of the square. So I'm just going to carry on making these squiggles. And it's a little fiddly to do on camera because I have to have my arms much further out from me. I like to be working right up close when I'm doing wire work. So it might look like I'm fussing with it. That's just because it can be a little bit difficult to capture on the camera. So I'll just carry it on with these spirals. Let's see, do I have enough? I have almost enough. I think one more will do. Just grab that, bring that up. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So I'll stop here and make a right angle. There we go. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And now what I want to do is I want to go and get a nice round object to wrap this around. And I'm just going to be using these whoppers pliers. That's how I do believe you pronounce it. I'm just actually going to flatten it out a little bit more. Okay. And then I need to wrap the wire around. So I'll just start like that so that I have something to grip onto. And then bring the wire around. So, and then I just want to trim it and then hold on to that piece. You don't want that flying across the room because it can hit you in the face and that would not be very good. Okay, and then just straighten it. And you can leave it like that, but what I want to do is I want to hammer that. And that should fit so the spiral fits right at the base and that is going to sit at the top. So this is going to go down the middle of our uh, veneer. And so I'm just going to bring over my metal plate. And I just want to pop my rubber one down first. And then the metal piece. And this will mean that it's not as noisy as it would be. Okay. And then I'm just going to position this down. And I'll grab my hammer and now one side's going to be hammered and one side's going to sit in the clay so I want to figure out which way I like it I like it that way and I'm just going to take the ball point of my hammer and hammer and now keep your fingers out of the way you can see that that is starting to get a hammered look and I'll just continue doing that all the way up and I might even use this and I might try to use the actual um, side of this so they actually give scratches so watch this flash that around hopefully you can see those scratches so I'm just going to continue the whole way up okay and so when you are done with that you'll want to just gently move this back in 
because I might have stretched a little bit. I'm just going to correct a few of these angles just slightly because it will have stretched when you did this so you can correct some of them slightly okay let me just check that this is sitting properly I have a little bit more room to move as far as these angles go I can press them down a little bit more more. So I'm just making sure that I'm not going too far with that. Okay, okay that fits pretty well. Okay, now what you want to do is just get rid of that and bring over some sort of a silver polishing paint, which or polishing cloth, not polishing paper, pol polishing cloth. And you want to just rub your piece up because after that uh, hammering it's going to have really um, made it a little bit more matte so I'm just polishing up this one end and then I want to show you what it looks like compared to the others it just takes a little bit of rubbing okay and so hopefully you can see the big difference there how it just looks much much shinier and you can see that the stuff starts to come off just give it a really good rub and this will clean it up pretty well. You don't have to worry too much about the other side, it's just the front side that you need to make sure it's nice and shiny. Because we're going to be putting this under resin, it's going to look really nice if it's shiny. Also just because you don't want that dust and dirt on there. Okay. You can see it's looking much better. You can even just give it a quick rub across your piece. And there we are, that looks really beautiful and shiny. And so that is our piece to work with. And so we'll bring over our two veneers again. And I've oops, got them on a piece of greaseproof paper. to do is I want to actually press this directly into the veneer so that I have an outline. I'm going to do the same here. Press directly in. Oh sorry this has gotten too bright for you. Let me just turn that down a bit. There we are. press that into the veneer like that. Okay, and I've got these two on a piece of paper. I've got them joined together. And so that's going to be sitting down the middle. So now we just want to quickly fill in that seam. So I'll take these off of the paper. And position them together onto the tile. Like so. And grab your paper and just smooth the entire piece. And this should get rid of your seam. And you want to be pressing hard when you're doing this. Okay. Completely smooth. Now we're almost ready to put that in. I want to just take my square cutter and position it. So let me get my head in there. I'll just press down. Get this out of the way. Okay. And this should fit quite nicely. Just sitting over there by the veil. And I'm just going to press that in. Make 
actually just going to grab my paper and burnish it in. And don't worry if your bead gets a little distorted when you do this. This is fine. We'll just cut it again. At the moment we just want to burnish that wire in there. Okay. Then take it out. And it will have left an indent. And then just trim away your excess. So this should sit in there perfectly. Okay. And this is just domed a little bit, so I'm just gently going to press on it so that it's not trying to lift out of the clay. So that fits, and so I'm just going to lift that out of the way. We can clean that in a minute because we're going to need to clean it. And then I'm just gently going to use my paper. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just busy trying to get rid of any fingerprints we might have got. Okay, and then I'm going to set this with a heat gun. If this is a tile that you can put in your oven, then you could also bake it. But I'm just going to set it with my heat gun quickly. And so I've just cured it with the heat gun and let it cool. So now I'm just gently going to pick it up. Now I just put that off to the side. And we're going to be using a sheet of black polymer clay that has been rolled out on my thickest setting, which is about 2mm thick. And the reverse texture stamp to the uh, cracked earth one that we are using. And this one I do believe is called crackled lava. Again, I'm just going to be careful because I don't want to put cornstarch on the back. Okay. And then I'm just going to texture this back so that it echoes the mica shift. And I'm actually going to be using some silver leaf, or not silver leaf, silver mica powder. Okay, just make sure that that's pressed in correctly. Now I'm just going to use my square cutter again to trim away a bunch of this excess because I don't want to be painting on more silver mica powder than I need. Get rid of that. And then I'm going to be using this beautiful silver mica powder and I do believe I've called it Arctic Night. I'm just going to take a brush and I'm just going to paint it into these cracks. And I apologise for that whirring sound in the background, but I've got the aircon on, it's really hot here. Okay. And all I want is it in the cracks, so I'm not going to worry about if it hasn't got onto the raised areas. Just focus on getting it into those cracks. Okay, and then when you've done that, grab a tissue and spray some alcohol on it. And then wipe away the mica powder that is on the raised areas. And you don't have to worry too much about getting this perfect right now because we will sand it. But it definitely saves time later to try and get rid of as much of it as you can right now. Yeah. 
And then I'll just smooth my back because the tissue can create a little bit of streaking. So it's nice to just smooth it. And there we go, we've got a nice textured back. And so now all I want to do is I want to flip that the other way around, grab this, place it on the back, and our square cutter should fit. Just being very careful because this is about as strong as a potato chip at the moment. And then I'll just use my blade to just smooth along the sides. We will need to do a little smear later to tidy it up, but I can use my blade to just tidy it up a bit in the meantime. run your finger along the sides just to smooth there we are and then if you see any scratches just run your finger along as well and that should smooth out any issues on the back and the front is fine because you've essentially sealed it um, not sealed, so you've cured it. And so now I'm just going to pop that onto a piece of grease proof paper and then I'll put that in the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And then after we're done, we're just going to do a smear along the sides. We're not going to attach the wire yet. The way we're going to attach wire is we're going to be putting resin over the front of this. And so I want to give this a good sand on the front. And so we're only going to be applying that wire to the bead once we have actually got all the way to the point where we can uh, put the resin on. Okay, and so this is out of the oven and now I just want to see if this fits still. Yes, it does. I just like to check after it's baked if it does fit. And it's going to fit a little loosely but that's fine because we're going to be putting some a poly bonder on just to hold it in place and then we'll put the resin on and then it should stick in place. But in the meantime you want to just grab some black polymer clay, warm it up in your hands, make it nice and soft. And just roll that into a tube and then just Press along the edge of your bead, or pendant in this case, I guess, and that will tidy up the edge. Repeat on all the other sides, and you might need to practice this a little bit. And the softer the clay, the better. So um, you can use Sculpey Three for this. Personally, it's better to use the brand that you're using. But if you have a bunch of black Sculpey Three that you've no idea what to use it with then this is a good technique to do it with but using your uh, current brand for your actual pendant is definitely the best way to go but you not, might need to practice a little bit if it's giving you a lot of trouble um, just add some liquid clay to the clay that you're smearing along and that will soften it up a bit but you can see even I'm having a little bit of trouble but you can just patch that up. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit um, messy in the beginning. Just gently tap down the clay so that it is all black and then gently start to smooth each side with your finger. Smooth down those seams and that is when it will start to look much better.
And just be patient with it. It's not a quick process. It's not incredibly slow, but if you rush it, um, you're not going to get it right. So just take your time, make sure that you're doing it right, and you should be done in no time. Okay, and so we're just about smooth, so now I'm just going to go and make sure that each end is nice and clean, and then I'll put this back in the oven for oh, around half an hour, probably about 20 minutes actually, so that, that clay can cure. Just pick up all of that. There we are, it's out of the oven. And so now we just want to do a little bit of light sanding. Now I'm just going to be sanding with my 400 grit sandpaper all the way up to my 8000 grit. And we'll do that front, back and sides. Now there's not a lot to remove in my case, but if you have fingerprints and things like that on the back and sides, then you're going to need to be a little bit more aggressive with your sandpaper. But on the front you don't have to worry too much because we are putting some resin on. And so that is going to hide any fingerprints that you might have. But just continue sanding until you've gone through all of your grits. And so that will have cleaned it up and just given it a light sheen on the back and front and sides. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our wire and just make sure that we've got it in the right spot. Okay. Now I want to just go get some gloves on because I don't want to get super glue on my fingers. And I'm going to be using Lisa Pavelka's Polybonder. And this is just supposed to be a temporary uh, glue to keep this in place while we are putting resin on it. So I'm just going to paint it along the back here. And just paint it on the little spiral so you don't need to paint it on the loop or the uh, spiral over here. We just want to have it in these little squiggly spots. Okay. I'm just going to wipe to get rid of any. And this is why I'm wearing gloves. And I'm just going to press down and I'm going to hold it there while that glue dries. And that's dried enough that I can lift my hands a bit. And I'm just careful not to let my gloves, you know, get glued on. So I'm just lifting them. And this is why I'm putting resin on here because it's going to hide any issues that we might have like a little bit of glue on there, that's fine. Okay, now we'll let that dry quickly and I'm going to take off these gloves and grab some 99% alcohol and a tissue just to see if I can get rid of some of the glue. So I've just got tissue here, I'm going to spray some alcohol there. Just be careful where I put my fingers. And let's see if that can get rid of some of the glue on the surface. a little bit but not a major problem just cleaning up a little bit okay then let that glue dry and so I'll just put that off to the side and I'm gonna get our resin ready okay and so we're gonna be working with ice resin today and I've just got that in a plunger and I'll just let the plunger level and then I'll pour out what I think should be enough resin. Okay. 
nice thing about the plunger is that it doesn't um you don't need to worry about measuring it out so you can do it in tiny amounts and so you're not going to rest resin with that and if you're looking for an ice resin plunger i bought mine off of linda's art spot she's got a bunch of cool tools there so you can go check that out there'll be a link in the description below the video because now all we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we mix up that ice resin correctly just get rid of all of those streaks in the meantime while we're doing this our glue will be drying which is good because um, we want that glue to be completely dry before we put the resin on. So just keep stirring. You want to get rid of all of those streaks and then mix for a little while afterwards as well. Because the only reason this resin wouldn't cure is just because you didn't mix it properly. But with that small amount, you don't have to mix that long. Okay, so now I'm just going to let it rest for a minute or so just to let those bubbles rise. Okay. So I'm just going to grab a resin mat, pop our bead on, and this, you'll see that the bubbles have risen quite a bit. So I'm just going to get a straw and blow those. And that will get rid of a lot of them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be very careful now, because... We don't want to add too much resin that we get spills. Just add the resin and then spread it out. All the way to the edges. And then we can add some more later. Now don't worry there are a few bubbles in here at the moment. They will rise and I'll be able to pop them and so the resin won't be cloudy like this for long I'm just going to add a bit more here and make sure you get it on the wire because you want that resin is what's going to set that wire in there okay and then once you've Spread everything out, you should be able to add a touch more resin. Now we're probably going to get drips around where the wire is, that's just something that's fairly inevitable. I'm just going to put as much as I can on, probably put another spoon on there, and that should be all that I need. I don't want to put any more than I need to on. And so I'll put that resin off to the side. And then I'll take a straw and blow. And that will get rid of a lot of the um a lot of the uh, bubbles. And now there's been a drip just over there. Don't worry about it. Don't move the pendant. It will be a lot easier to get rid of the drip uh, if the pendant hasn't been moved and the resin hasn't been smudged all over the place. It will also protect the mica powder on the backing if you don't smudge it around and get the resin too much on the backing. So just leave the resin, uh, let that set for about 12 hours. I'm going to let it set overnight and then in the morning I will show you how to tend to those drips. And so you might want to let that drip run its course. There's another one on this side that I think is dripping. So let it run its course, let it spill over, and then once the resin's been sitting for maybe around 15 minutes, it will start to um, firm up just a touch, and then you can add a little bit more resin if your dome has started to deplete. But again, we've got a lot of resin in here. There's another little drip coming down the side. You can see that. Don't worry, we'll be able to fix that really easily. So let this sit, don't move it, and then in 12 hours, I'll show you what to do. Okay. So this has been curing for roughly about 12 hours and I just took it off the mat, resin mat and you can see it, there's quite a bit of resin on the back but the front is nice and smooth. So now you're going to do is you're going to take a craft knife and you're just going to go 
with it and you're going to draw not draw slice a line across that resin You should be able to pull it off. And you want to do this at the 12 hour mark because it will still be slightly flexible. If you try and do this after the 12 hour mark, generally it's a lot harder. There we are. That's the one. You just want to slice wherever those are. and clean. Here we are. So that is how you get rid of little resin problems and so now we have a beautiful pendant and this is where we're going to hang it. And the nice thing is the resin's almost actually um, sealed the uh, join over here because we've got some resin here and I'm not going to try and pick that out because that's actually quite good because it's sealed off our join so this won't be moving. So it's a sealed loop, which is great. So now we can begin our assembly. Okay, so for the next part you're going to need two pieces of cord. And I am using rat's tail today. And it is this beautiful shiny cord that looks really nice. And all we're going to do is we're going to take that. And I'm just going to start at one end and just make sure that they're all the same length. Yes, and then just pass it through your hoop, and then at the other end, pop a nice large hold silver bead. So just bring that right up to the end. And then I'm just, there we go, got those separated the right way. And just make sure that they're the same length again. Sometimes when you're doing that they can end up not being quite right. So I'll just trim. And then I've got these nice little cord ends here. And with a little bit of fussing you can get that to go through. Like so. Then grab something to close it up give it a little tug to make sure that it is secure repeat on the other side make sure it's the right length trim if not and then squish those cords into here just with a little bit of fussing you can get it to go through. And I like to twist because that generally helps it go through. There we are, you can see it coming through. Okay. Then close. Give it a little tug. Okay. Then grab a jump ring. Open that up, put one half of your clasp on, and attach that to your cord end. And by the way, I get all of my findings from Fire Mountain Gems. So if you're looking for these sorts of endings, you can have a look at them and they will have everything there. Okay, and so you've got a nice finish. And you might need to just twist this a little bit to get it right. So let me just twist that around. There we are. And this side too. Just twist that around so that it's sitting right. And there we are. That is your necklace. And it's a nice way to finish it off. 
and so that is basically it for today's tutorial and so I do hope that you enjoyed it and now you'll have a pendant to match your earrings and so let me know in the comments below whether you like this or not and if you liked my tutorial today and the tutorials that I put out every week on YouTube please do consider signing up to my patron community on patreon um, every penny helps support the YouTube channel so that I can continue putting out free tutorials every single week so please do consider checking that out there'll be a link to that in the description below the video and if you would like to buy some of the tools that are used in this video such as the cutter I do have my own Etsy shop Jessima Design and there'll also be a link to that in the links below the video so please do check that out if you're interested and as always I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now